Let's now take a look at this idea of shifting curves around and transforming them. So we start with the ideas for translation. So a horizontal shift. So horizontal, it's the domain that's being affected, so it's grouped with the x. So we replace x with x minus whatever the shift happens to be. So y would be function x minus 8. So as I say, grouped with the x. So left or right, depending on whether it's positive or negative, it's h units. And if you're unsure which direction, then simply solve that little equation. Well, what would make x minus h equal to 0? Then that's obviously where I've moved 0 to. Vertical shift, but now it's grouped with the y, because vertical, it's the range that's being affected. So y minus k. So it's y minus k equals function x. It's grouped with the y. You don't normally see it like that, of course. The k ends up on the other side, and you see something like that. y equals function x plus a constant. But the point is, that constant is not grouped with the x. We can move it and put it with the, uh, the y on the other side. So it'll go up or down, again, depending on whether it's positive or negative. And also, if you're unsure, just solve the equation. What would make y minus k equal to zero? All right, so let's do one. We see something like this. We know it's a quadratic, so we know the basic shape. It's going to be y equals x squared. What have we done to it? We've got a couple of shifts happening. First of all, I notice we've shifted three units, and it must be to the right, because if I make x minus 3 equal to 0, x would equal 3. So let's push that over to 3. We also shifted up four units. Why do I know up? Well, when I move that 4 over to the other one, what makes y minus 4 equal to 0? 4. So up we go. And there's our new curve. Oh, x squared plus 2x plus y squared minus 4y minus 4 equals 0. Not immediately obvious what the shift is happening here. So we've got a bit of completing the squares to do. We've got to do it both on the x and on the y as well. But it'll always group to be half the coefficient of. So for the x's, half the coefficient of x is, is 1. So we get x plus 1 squared. For the y's, half the coefficient of y is negative 2. y minus 2 squared. Move the constant over, but also when we completed the square there, we got to add in those squares. So one squared and two squared, we get nine. There it is. So when it's in that form, we can see, yeah, okay, we've got a circle. X squared plus Y squared equals nine, uh, but we've shifted it left one unit, move it over, and up two units, move it up. There's our circle. I suppose I should have really put in the radius as well. So there we go. I've drawn it. I just didn't say it was 3, but there's our circle. y equals 2x squared plus 8x plus 5. So again, I'm going to do some completing the square here, but it's so much easier to complete the square on x squared than it is on 2x squared. So I'll divide everything by 2 first, and then it becomes obvious. Oh, OK. So half the coefficient of x is 2. So I must have x plus 2 all squared, uh, but add back in the... 2 squared, so the 4. Um, that becomes minus 3 on 2, but now I'll get it back to y equals, so now I'll multiply everything by 2. So there we have our equation, y equals 2 outside of x plus 2 squared minus 3. It is our basic parabola. In this case, it'll get steeper because of the 2 in front of the x plus 2 squared. So I'll just make that, there we go, a little bit steeper. We have shifted it left 2 units. And we have shifted it down three units. There's a, a rough sketch. Okay, so the other idea, what about reflecting curves? If I want to reflect vertically, again, it's the x's we're affecting when we flip vertically. So we place x with negative x. So y equals function negative x. We see that sort of thing. That will reflect in the y axis. Now, interestingly, if I want to reflect in a different line, instead of replacing x with minus x, I'll replace it with 2a minus x. Not a minus x, but 2a minus x. Let me explain why. So there's y equals function x. Function minus x would be a reflection in the y-axis. So there's that one. But if it's 2a minus x, now I have a shift happening. What makes 2a minus x equal to 0? 2a. So I must have shifted it right, 2a. But now have a look at my final curve and the original curve. And you see it's not reflected in 2a, but it is reflected in a. So that's why it's 2a minus x, if you want to do that. 
Okay, you can do a similar thing horizontally, but now it's the y values that are being flipped. So minus y would equal function x, but we would normally see it as more like that probably, y equals negative function x. That will reflect in the x-axis, but again, you don't have to in the x-axis, similar thing. If we have y equals 2a minus function x, so we're replacing y with 2a minus y, there's function x, reflect it, minus function x, shift it up 2a, and you'll see, if you look at the original curve and the new curve, yep, that reflects in y equals a. With these, the order you do it can be important. So always do your reflection before the translation in this situation. Always do the reflection before the translation. Okay. Reflection in the origin. That's essentially rotation. It has both the y being negative and the x being negative as well. So y equals minus function minus x. So rotation in the origin, or rotation 180 degrees, is the same as just doing two reflections. One in the x-axis, one in the y-axis. Let me show you. There's y equals function x. So if I made it y equals minus function x, I've reflected in the x-axis. But now if I replace x with minus x, reflect in the y-axis, so yeah, look at the original curve, look at the final curve, and you'll notice, yeah, we've rotated that 180 degrees. y equals minus x plus 1 cubed plus 2. So it is a cubic. There's my very dodgy cubic. Ooh, a bit bumpy there towards the origin. Reflection before the translation. So I'm going to look after the reflection first. We reflect in the x-axis for this one, because that negative sign is grouped with the y, really. So, there we go. Now, we're shifting that left one unit, move it across, and then up two units. And we have our new cubic. Reflection before the translation. Y equals minus 2 to the power of minus x. So the basic curve is our exponential 2 to the power of x. This is reflection in the origin because you'll notice the negative sign is grouped with the x, but it's also grouped with the y as well. So this will rotate 180 degrees. So, voila. 3G, we'll be looking at those type of translations.